What's up guys, of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours real course, Death Scarender, and of course, welcome to our El Bay Week 2 game against Necrostevo, or oh, Eterna City Endes. And yeah, I mean, going into this game, I knew many of us were going to be a part of this game, and if of course, if you're wondering, my team planner is going to be linked down below, and basically, I think it brought the, my approximate, like, this was pretty much what I thought was going to bring outside of uh, his Ponyard. But yeah, that looks like the team made for my team, basically. Uh, I am extremely weak to Boneyard, or no, <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to Mammoth Swine. And I knew that going in, and that was definitely a big frustration knowing that. But I had to find a way to work around it. Like I said, I did go with a Yasha Berry uh, Thunderous to be able to deal with the Mammoth. Now, did not equip Yasha Berry on Thunderous going into this game. Which was kind of annoying, because I do kind of realize that mid-game is actually is... Uh, a life orb that I actually realized that turn one that, that was just like ah oh, shit this is gonna be very very tough but outside of that I don't see any good lead on his man I mean he has uh, the mamma which I thought was a possible lead uh, Archie was a possible lead good balance a possible lead Thunders of speed all of them and if he goes for the whimsy cut then just sludge wave that and I should be fine now he could potentially be a faster whimsy cut with prankster of course that means sleep first is gonna be an issue but that's pretty much the size of it, so yeah, Thunder is a good lead, and uh, basically, that was really my whole thought process from the get-go, so anyway, with all this, my guys, let's go. So yeah, from the get-go, of course, we are going to see the monster, the beast, the uh, pretty darn annoying Archeops. Archeops is actually quite formidable being 110 speed, now I am faster, but a potential Stone Edge, if it's Scarf, can do massive amount of damage to it, now he will switch out. Which showing me that I'm probably faster, so I'll go for the Thunderbolt, and it does a good chunk of damage here. But like I said, it's now that I realized I'm Life Orb, so I was like, ah oh, shit, ah oh, shit, ah oh, shit, this is, this is bad. <laughs> so I do see Leftovers, which leads me to believe that he's a more defensive set, which is good. Uh, he's gonna go for Lead Seed, of course, being quite frustrating. I was pretty sure I was gonna go for Tailwind, but the Tailwind is something I can't cope with well. So I will just wrap this up, Thunder is actually taking out the Wimpham. And that's that one out of the way. And as of this point, I felt kind of okay. Like I said, Mammoth Swine was a big, big annoyance. So now, here comes the Mammo, which of course being a good lead for him. So, right, I'm actually gonna stop the footage here. Um, this was my thought process. So, you know, Mammoth Swine was in, and I have three options. Option number one is that I switch out to Keldeo, predict the Ice Shard. Um, which I will take well, and I will outspeed depending on his set, uh, which I thought was, you know, that's the safest play, definitely. And my second option was, of course, actually switching out to any mana to get a neutral hit, basically uh, bringing Charizard before he mega balls, in case he goes for Stellar Prox or anything like that, because he's obviously forcing me out, and Ice Shard is in the area of taking me out if he's a Life Orb set, or if he's a Scarf set, which I didn't really know. Uh, third option was that I basically I go for Grass Knot, I find out what item that it is, and uh, take it from there. Because let's face it, if it is a Scarf Set, then he's forced to go for an Icicle Crash. Yeah, and that actually means that Kelly can come in freely. If he goes for an Ice Shard showing his a Life Orb Set, that means my Shards are coming in and I just freely go for Flare Blitz. So that was a situation in mind. Like, I had options here, or I wouldn't go for Flare Blitz, on, or I would actually go for Dragon Claw to this, gonna switch out to Dragon Knight. But yeah, those were my options. Like I said, I, depend I actually decided here to go for the Grass Knot and pretty much see what item it is. I was pretty sure I was going to go for an Ice Shard and finish it up, but um, as you guys will see, he probably went for an Icicle Crash in his Life Orb set or an Earthquake. No matter what, really, he does lose Mammoth Swine right there, right then, and that was pretty much GG. Like, from this point out, there is no way he can turn his one around as long as I keep Thunder's health free for his Dragonite. So he's gonna go for his Bishop here or Ponyard, damn it. And I really didn't feel comfortable staying in. I didn't really want to take a Sucker Punch because I need to just kind of stay healthy. Now he predicts this real nicely going to Archeops. But here's the thing Archeops can really do a whole lot, and Tyranitar, of course, has the Sugar Bear in case he actually sees that one coming. Now he goes for the Acrobatics, actually, which I felt was really weird and um, mostly because depending on his set um, it won't do a whole lot to me and that feels like it's either banded but most likely scarfed no I could be wrong 
Uh, I am massively defensive, so that might as well be true. Now, I know he's going to switch out, so decide to go for Thunder Wave. With no Mammoth Swine left, Thunder Wave was the safer call here, and that shuts down his Cobalion right from the start. <laughs> wow, damn it, sorry. <laughs> so anyway, I do predict a potential close combat here, and of course, Tentacruel is really, really, really nice here, because it just shuts down Cobalion completely. And basically, I'm just here freely to go for a Scald, and... Um, I actually wanted Sansom up because that means that if his Dragonite comes in, that uh, he's gonna lose his Marvel scale, or I do believe it's called that, from the switch in. Now, he actually switched it out straight on at it, actually. I go for his call. Of course, it's not gonna do anything, but here's the point. Uh, he has to be adamant to KO me from this range. And if it is adamant, then I would speed him, and Ice Beam actually takes him out. Second option, he's Jolly, which means he will outspeed me, but that it won't kill me. Now, he probably is adamant. This Ice Beam is gonna kill, and that's pretty much the size of it. If it was specially defensive, he could have survived it, but it was a very small chance of that being, of course, true. Now, Sansom does subside, and Tentacruel got a real nice kill there. Now, he's gonna bring Archeops yet again, and here is where things get a bit ugly, because it goes for Earthquake, I know I can take it, it does m at most 80%, but he scores a crit here, which is unfortunate, because it actually takes my 6 away from me, and basically, now I'm pretty sure he probably is locked into that, so I'm just gonna go to uh, my Thunderous. Basically here, I decided to just go straight on at it for a um, Thunderbolt, thinking that it's most likely he will switch out here, he would, no would not want to risk that. And Thunderbolt, of course, is so close of killing the Oliver, and uh, yeah, I, I just keep going, and Kubelian is out, there is really nothing he can do. Now, He's gonna bring his pony on here, trying to force me out, I believe, with a Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch is not able to kill us. I actually calced it before I actually made that call. I felt a little unvery, you know, whether I should do it or not. But Thunderbolt was actually an Oko uh, with Life Orbs. So I should definitely have made that call at the previous matchup. That would probably save it some time. But basically, his last one is the Archeops. And I do actually decide here to, in case he is Scarfed, basically, to go for Thunder Wave. Now, obviously, it, to be honest here, uh, since it switched out on uh, the founders previously, it's very likely it wasn't that, but uh, we'll see his uh, team preview, which is of course going to be linked down below to get it with his upload once that is out of the way. But anyway, I'm just going to wrap this up with Undyne, you know, getting that second kill for Mega Charizard X, which was supposed to of course be the cr crying yule of this team, but... Uh, <sighs> Thunderous just was that much better this game. It was incredibly potent against, of course, the Necros Devo. And that is a 4 0 victory in the Scandinavian's favor. So, yeah, I mean, I have to leave at least some uh, after thoughts. This was a very, very short game. And it's a short game because of the momentum I get out of his old prediction with his Mammo Swine. Now, like I said, his Mammo um, could possibly destroy my whole team. And me not having the Yasha Bear on freaking Thunderous, like, the prime idea <laughs> to actually win this game me not having that yeah that was a big big hiccup from steve-o's side and th that's the worst part and um, with the out mammo it, it just he couldn't keep up with this it just it wasn't possible and i i don't blame necro steve for making that call a a, a good player or a, a, a normal player would definitely switch out in that situation like i said i wanted to kind of find out his item and uh, work from there like, the, the risk of switching out to Mammo was just too big for my team that I couldn't do it. It was just such a big risk. So I was better off actually second up Funders, which I know sounds weird, I know. But at that point, I felt that I could you know, work around it to my advantage. Knowing the set is helpful. And uh, had it been a life orb set, which I was assuming, uh, my shards are like, we could have a number on the team from that situation alone. Now, obviously... I do believe his Archeops was, um, was Scarf, which meant that he could have done a huge number on me. Uh, anyway, but yeah, that's pretty much the sides of it. I really encourage you guys to go to check out Necrosteva's channel. Like I said, this is probably one of his weaker games, but I don't blame him for that play. I really are not. I would probably have done the same in that situation. I would actually say that my, my play against the Mammoth Swine was pretty darn bold, <laughs> and it paid off, luckily. Um, so yeah, everybody, thank you so much for watching, of course, like I said, make sure to check out Negro Steve's channel, he's a great guy, and has a lot of good content, and are a tremendous battler, 
I'm definitely all root of this guy in this league, mostly because he's actually been quite original most of the time. So yeah guys, thank you so much for watching and I see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.